Hey everybody, January 1st is going to be here before you know it. And if you're like most people, you probably have a new planner to start January 1st. You may have opened it up a few times, stared at it, and wondered, how am I going to get started? Don't worry, you're not alone, and hopefully this video will help you figure out what to do with your brand new planner. So first, you're going to want to decide what you're going to use it for. If you have just one planner, you're going to probably toss everything into it. If you have multiple planners, you might have one for budgeting, fitness, or content planning. So once you've figured out what you're going to use the planner for, if it's going to be your everything planner, you might want to decide if you're going to color code your appointments and your tasks. Some people do it by family member where each kid is their own color and some people do it by uh, appointments being one color, cleaning being another, and you know maybe business or work tasks being a different color. Now once you've done that what I like to do is grab my sticky notes and start my pre-planning. So this is my daily duo. And as you can see, I've got some post-it notes in here. Uh, these are for specific events and tasks that I want to do this month and will go on my monthly spread. And then in my dashboard, since I don't know what I'm going to do exactly with my dashboard, I put some sticky notes with ideas for each of the dashboard. And then I haven't done it yet, but normally I will go through and put stickers on the pages that I know I have an event or appointment or task that needs to be done throughout the month. And I do it one month at a time so I don't get too far ahead. If I do have something come up, um, let's see. If I do have something come up, I have put it on my monthly spread so that I remember to add that when I get to that month. And I did remember that I put a sticky note in for a couple of appointments I have in January on those days. So like I know my asthma appointment is at 8 a.m. because I've got this sticky note in here. Okay, so I have zoomed in on my January dashboard to show you kind of how I think I'm going to set it up. I know the dashboards are a struggle for a lot of people and this is to maybe give you some ideas. I do sometimes change up my dashboard because I like to try new things and I see other people's ideas and I put them into my dashboard, see how it works. If it doesn't work, oh well, I just go back to something else for the next month. So for right now, I'm going to use the large blank box for events. These little four dots here, I'm going to do my top to do's. Maybe there's going to be something to do with my goals. And then I like to write down either some months, I write down the books that I want to read that month. Other months, I write down the books that I actually read that month. And then down on the bottom here, I'm still not 100% certain this is what I'm going to do, but I put a sticky note for monthly and quarterly cleaning just as like a placeholder because again, not 100% sure that's what I'm going to use it for. So that is how I'm going to do my January dashboard. This blank page here, I have a sticky note that I want to use for my monthly business tasks that don't really have like a specific assigned date for them. Once I have set up the dashboard, I would also set up my monthly view, usually about the same time I do those. I am planning to use the Celebrate Each Day sticker book from Erin Condren. Now this is the monthly sticker book, so it has like coordinating stickers to the colors in the mid-century circles. It doesn't match the flora because those are kind of like a pastel muted color. But if you wanted to, you could still use these. So I'm going to use these to do my monthly view. 
And I also have the sticker subscription coming, so I may use that as well. I'm a little hesitant because I really did not like the last sticker subscription, so that was October, November, December. So I'm kind of waiting to do my monthly until I get those and I see what stickers those have in them. Okay, so the weekly or daily spreads are really where you get into the down and dirty, at least for me. This is where I put everything I need to do to get done for the day, for the week, and I reference these spreads every day. I don't usually go back to the month and I occasionally go back to the dashboard, but this is where everything is happening. And so I use a mix of decorative and functional stickers to set up my week. As you can see, this is the Daily Duo with the EC sticker sheet. And then I just pulled out some matching stickers from other places. Uh, let's see, I think I used Erin Condren, Planner Kate, um, Thorn Creek stickers. I think that's it. So here is Wednesday and Thursday with more tasks, um, more decorative stuff. So, yep, that is how I plan my weeks using stickers to make sure that it is both functional and a creative outlet for me. Okay, so now that I've shown you kind of how to set up your planner, I'm going to kind of walk through my planners and how I use them. So this is the Daily Duo. This is for uh, January through June. And this is where I put, you know, everything that I need to get done, all my tasks, um, if I'm working at home, working in the office. So that's like the powerhouse. And then again this year I'm going to be using a pocket planner. This I toss in my backpack or my purse. And I jot down appointments, uh, hockey games, different things like that, that if I need to reference, I can pull out my pocket planner. It's very basic. I use pen and pencil in it, and that's about it. This is going to be my social media planner. So this is the vertical layout. And I think... So monthly view, I'm not going to use in this. Dashboard, probably won't use. This is where I do my social media planning. So I like that it has three boxes because I run three different accounts. I have one for runs on espresso. Then I have one for my photography. And I have one for my dog. So what I do is these boxes down here, I just note if there's any events or, you know, like national day ofs, and I write them down there. And then what I'll go back and do is for each day that I'm going to post a picture, video, uh, blog post, whatever, I'll make a note of what is going up that day, what picture I want to use, and like a little note of what I might want to say. So I find the vertical works best for that. This past year I used a couple of different ones for that. I ended up in the hourly and I, you know, kind of split the pages in half and, you know, it worked okay and, you know, highlighted when I completed the post. Um, this one I actually wrote some stats which I didn't keep doing, but the hourly, it just didn't work. It this is going to be much easier because it's not time-based and you know I'll know this box will be for runs on espresso, this will be for photography, and this will be for my dog. So easy peasy on that one. And then I'm trying something this year with a monthly planner. I'm not sure if it will work so bear with me. So my 
goal is to use this as like an educational um, project tracker type thing. So I've written in each month what photography class I want to watch, which book I want to read, and then I have a spot for project if I'm working on a specific project that month. And my plan is for the monthly view, I can write out, you know, this week I want to read this book. I'm going to watch a class on this day and this day. And I'm going to go edit on this day or whatever. I'm plan it out on my monthly calendar here. And then the blank page here, I'm going to put editing notes for my photos. Here I'm putting that I'm going to watch the outdoor conference and I'm going to read photo therapy. Not sure how I'm going to use the rest of this yet. And then this is going to be places where uh, I can jot down book notes from the book that I've read. And then I've got course notes. And that is how I am planning to use this monthly planner. So hopefully that will work for me. And lastly, I am using the content planner and I am using this to plan um, my blog posts and video posts mostly. So this is the dashboard of the content planner. It is a blank page here. It's got lines, dot grid, and some stuff over here. I have started filling this in for January. I've written down um, it is Get Organized Month and Creativity Month. So I'm planning on featuring those kind of things in my uh, blogs, videos, uh, in social media. And then I've got uh, goals here, which I need to fix that goal because that is not what I want. And add a couple more on your radar, hashtags, hit list, and collabs. And then this is the actual planner part. So I've got themes, um, this month I will, and then weekly goals you can write in here. And I've started planning um, when content is gonna go. So third, I will have an email for my photography list. And then I will have a blog for Runs on Espresso. So I'll want to post that as well to Instagram. And then I'll have a video for Runs on Espresso as well. And then I've written down, again, those kind of days that would be relevant to my content in some way. And... That is pretty much the content planner because the next page you flip to is February. So that is the content planner. So that is my planner stack. I've got the content planner for blogs and video. I've got vertical planner for social media content. I've got the monthly planner for education, reading, videos, etc. Daily Duo, which is my workhorse, which is everything I have to do. And the pocket planner to remind me of things while I am out and about. So that is what I'm using all my planners for in 2022. What planners do you have for next year or do you just use one for everything? Drop it in the comments. And then be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, may your coffee and planning be strong.